It's been a crazy month. A new town, a new job, a couple of new trainees. I might be new in town, but when it comes to food safety, I already know my way around. I have to, because things around here move quickly. But no matter how fast you gotta move, I make sure every one of my crew makes time for food safety. I've been in the business more than eight years, and food safety is something I never compromise. I set high standards and stick to them, and that's one of the main reasons why they picked me for this job. I take food safety very seriously, and without having the right practices in place and enforcing them, I'd be leaving the door wide open for foodborne illness. That's why I'm training all my employees in food safety. Not just the new hires. And I'll tell you what I'm telling them. Keeping food safe begins with a good grasp of the basics. So here's what everyone needs to know about them. You need to know the dangers of foodborne illness, the cost of foodborne illness, the populations at high risk for foodborne illness, how food becomes unsafe, and important prevention measures. Let's start by looking at what makes foodborne illness dangerous. First and foremost, a foodborne illness is a disease that's carried or transmitted to people by food they've eaten. And if two or more people experience the same illness after eating the same food, you've got an outbreak on your hands. That means one mistake could make hundreds of people sick. And I'm not exaggerating. Foodborne illness is a bigger problem than many people realize. Every year, millions of people are affected by it. While not all those cases stem from restaurants, we have to do our part to prevent foodborne illness. And that's why every establishment, no matter how large or how small, has got to take every precaution to ensure the safety of the food it prepares and serves to its customers. You do it to protect the customers, and you do it to protect the business. Because among other things, foodborne illness poses a financial threat. A foodborne illness outbreak can cost an establishment an awful lot of money. Between fines and legal damages, that figure could rocket into the millions. An outbreak can temporarily shut down an establishment or even put it out of business for good. The cost of a foodborne illness outbreak can be measured in loss of customers and sales, damage to your prestige and reputation, lawsuits resulting in legal fees, increased insurance premiums, lowered employee morale, employee absenteeism, a need for retraining employees, and embarrassment. Money and business aside, let's not forget that a foodborne illness can ultimately be fatal. So it should be pretty clear why good food safety practices are not only important but vital to your operation. Now, when you learn more about foodborne illness, you find out that certain groups of people have a higher risk of contracting one, sometimes with serious results. These groups include infants and preschool-aged children. That's because they haven't built up adequate immune systems, the body's defense against illness. Pregnant women are also in the higher risk group. The health of the fetus they're carrying is at risk, and a woman's immune system is compromised towards the end of pregnancy. Other groups of people with compromised immune systems include the elderly, because their immune systems have weakened with age. And transplant recipients, people with HIV AIDS, and those with cancer or on chemotherapy. People in any of those groups run a higher risk of contracting a foodborne illness than the rest of the population. And those risks increase when they eat contaminated, potentially hazardous food, which is also known as food that needs time and temperature control for safety. You can call the food in this category TCS food for short. Now there's several ways food can become unsafe and the Centers for Disease Control and Prevention have identified some common factors that are responsible for foodborne illness. These include purchasing food from unsafe sources, holding food at improper temperatures, failing to cook food adequately, poor personal hygiene, and using contaminated equipment. With the exception of purchasing food from unsafe sources, each of these factors is related to time-temperature abuse, cross-contamination, 
or poor personal hygiene. A lot of the time, cases of foodborne illness involve more than one of these factors. Let's look at time temperature abuse first. Food has been time temperature abuse anytime it's been allowed to remain too long at temperatures that help foodborne pathogens to grow. And in case you don't know what pathogens are, they're microorganisms that can cause illness. A foodborne illness can result if food is time temperature abused in any of the following ways. If the food isn't held or stored at required temperatures, if it isn't cooked or reheated to temperatures that kill microorganisms, and if it isn't cooled properly. Cross-contamination is another factor that can cause foodborne illness. It occurs when pathogens are transferred from one surface or food to another. When that happens, foodborne illness can result. Let me give you some specific examples of how cross-contamination occurs. It happens when contaminated ingredients are added to food that receives no further cooking. When cooked or ready-to-eat food is allowed to touch food contact surfaces that had not been cleaned and sanitized. Or when food that may be contaminated is allowed to touch or drip fluids onto cooked or ready-to-eat food. Cross-contamination can also occur when a food handler touches food that's contaminated and then touches cooked or ready-to-eat food. And when contaminated cleaning cloths are not cleaned and sanitized before being used on other food contact surfaces. You also have to understand and address personal hygiene issues if you want to prevent foodborne illness. Because if someone on your staff has poor personal hygiene practices, they can do much more than merely offend your customers. They can contaminate food or food contact surfaces and cause illnesses. A foodborne illness can result if employees don't wash their hands properly after using the restroom or whenever their hands become contaminated. And their hands can become contaminated after coughing, sneezing, smoking, or handling raw food. Your employees should also never touch or scratch sores, cuts, or boils, and then touch food, food preparation surfaces, or utensils. And if they come to work while they're sick, for example, if they're vomiting or have diarrhea, they can pass a foodborne illness along to your customers. Here's a quick real-life example of how important it is to control these factors that can cause foodborne illness. It happened not too long ago at a restaurant just down the street. A few hours after a big lunch rush, about two dozen people got sick. They had abdominal cramping, nausea, and vomiting. And 10 of them needed emergency medical treatment and hospitalization. An investigation by the health department revealed that all of them ate chicken salad. And the chicken was contaminated with the bacteria Staphylococcus aureus. And just as I mentioned before, more than one factor led to the outbreak. It turned out that several of the food handlers carried the bacteria. They ignored the rules regarding proper hand washing, and their poor personal hygiene practices led them to contaminate the cooked chicken. The problem was made worse when the chicken salad was left out on the prep table. And to top it off, the bacteria spread when the food handlers used the same utensils to handle the chicken salad and a variety of other food. All of that was preventable. All the sick people, all the legal and financial consequences for the establishment, the ruined reputation, all of it. So what can you do about it? Focus on specific prevention measures and enforce the right procedures. That includes controlling time and temperature every step of the way, practicing good personal hygiene, preventing cross-contamination, and purchasing from approved, reputable suppliers. You have to establish standard operating procedures that focus on these areas. Then, make sure they're understood and enforced. Cesar, todo está listo. Can we punch out? Hold on a second, let me check this out. But it's up to you and everyone in your team to follow those procedures at all times. We know we have to work fast to keep up with business. But taking shortcuts in food safety doesn't save you time or money, nor anything really. But you could be risking everything. So no matter how busy you are, you've got to make time for food safety. In many ways, it's the most important part of your job. Right, guys? Right? Yes. <laughs>